It's Friday. Do you know where your IT guys are? We don't. It's Patch and Switch. And now two guys who tried to make a run for the border but thought it was about CSS and HTML. It's Patch and Switch. If, if you run for the border, border in CSS, CSS. I, do you actually run off the screen? I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you, I guess you could hit the, the edge of a box. Or... We'd, we'd be out of phase and different colors would start happening. Exactly. I don't know. I don't know. I Who couldn't knows? handle that. I wouldn't either. It's, it's too complicated. It is way too complicated. And which border would it be? The warm one or the cold one? Uh, or would it have padding or would it have margins? I have no idea. These are the questions one asks yes. as a CSS designer. Is there such a thing as a CSS designer? Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> you, I, I didn't know if there was or not, if that was uh, that was something going on. I do a little HTML and CSS stuff on the side, and I, it drives me batty sometimes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. That's why I don't do much of it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, this is where I'm always nervous. Are we streaming? Are we, are we not streaming? streaming? Well, according to the system, we are streaming. Yes. No. But let's check the on actual... page. Yeah, on page. It looks like we're there. Yeah. I see us. We got six people. Hi. Hello. Streaming. Yeah. Well, uh, there's, there's, there we go. There we're we go. And now we yes. just need to mute. No. And but let's check. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Got it. I was about to say, I heard ourselves. There we go. Yes. We... We, we need a dedicated person looking after the stream and the audio. That but, would be wonderful, wouldn't it? But now you're doing this. <laughs> I'm, right? yes. So, I, welcome back hello. to the table. Hello. Welcome back to the big boy table. <laughs> I, I don't have to sit at the little table anymore. No, no, no the little folding card table. Exactly. The, the TV dinner table. You it actually kind of looks like a folding table, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it does. Uh, welcome to the Patch and Switch Show, everybody. We are here. It is a Friday. It has been a fortnight since our last show. Yes, it has been. And uh, once again... One of the people are not around, so right. you know we're picking up the slack for the tall guy with good hair. Yeah, he's uh, just your Mr. hair's pretty good too, though. Well, thank you. I do. Do you, do you use chutney? I don't use like he does. Chutney? He uses a hair chutney. That's how he gets his hair the way it is. His hair no, chutney. I use a I use a pomade. Pomade. Yes. Oh. I um. Not pomegranate. It's pomade. I, I take a washcloth and just kind of wipe off the the hat, and that's um, it. <laughs> Yeah, it's you just wipe off the hat. You don't yeah. wipe off anything else. No, it's good. Yeah. So, how you been? I've been well. It's a glorious day outside. The sun is shining. It is. It is in Seattle. It is in April still, so that's a good sign. It is. It is 420 day. Yes, it is. Um, apparently, that has some kind of ulterior meaning if you're on the West Coast, and I'm just learning this today for yeah. some reason because of the news. I okay. didn't know this. So, you didn't um, know that? Happy 420 day. Okay. I'd um, rather... I, I Personally, I preferred yesterday. Oh yeah, what was yesterday? Four nineteen. Yeah. What's four nineteen? My birthday. Oh my! Oh my goodness! Happy. You don't even happy. You have like how many systems that have my birthday in it? I don't. don't I don't, don't actually use Facebook, and it probably or would have, or LinkedIn been, or. Does LinkedIn do birthdays now yes, too? Yes, it does. See, I didn't even know that. Yeah. So my anyway. apologies. Yes. Another year under the belt. Unfortunately. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you know, it's a uh, it's a good thing when another year goes by. Exactly. Uh, another, I survive one more uh, sir, trip around the sun. Trip around the sun. Another. Here we go another, for another. One more performance review under your belt too. That's oh, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gave myself a horrible review too. Wow. So yeah. I will spare everybody from having to go off and to sing Happy Birthday. Um, because we don't have the money to pay the rights anyway. Exactly. So, uh, happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Um, wow, man. Jeez. Yeah. I feel like an absolute heel. Yes, you the should. the fact I didn't even say anything to you. <laughs> I guess that means we have to go off for beer uh, uh, and have, a, not have a drink. until next week. What's happening next week? That's when you're off your I'm meds? getting out of here today. Yeah? Yeah. What? Yeah. I'm going uh, f uh, as a part of my birthday. A friend right? of mine said, hey, we're going to go up to the San Juan Islands for the weekend. I'm like, okay. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. It's going to be good weather for it's us. It's going to be great weather for it. Are you kidding me? It's going to wow. be awesome. Fact, so there's, there's like a beer competition going on tomorrow, man. Huh? The Homebrewers Association. No, All right. No, no, not the, 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 you know, the keg drop-off one that we do. Right. The actual comps tomorrow? The actual comps tomorrow. Well. Sucks to be them. He's off on a boat somewhere. I'm, I'm going to be on a boat. Wow. <laughs> or a ferry. Wow. This is a, we'll yep. do a whole episode of just catching up with Jared Shockley. There we go. Uh, <laughs> after my, after my, uh, it's, and, and I actually did just make a run for the border. You did? Yeah, it was up in Vancouver. Up in Vancouver? Vancouver. Successfully speaking and talking? Successfully speaking, successfully talking. Um, yes. That's some very good comments and reviews. I had a lot of uh, good comments and reviews, yes. Good. Unfortunately, they, uh, most SharePoint Saturdays don't have a official, like, 
scoring system thing. But yeah, yeah. if you talk with the people, they were just uh, lots of people, good questions. You, you, you do them to support the community and share your knowledge, exactly. right? Exactly. That's, that's how I got for. my, I, as I've said uh, a couple times in a couple of different uh, settings, that's how I got my start was going to things like SharePoint Saturday and Tech. Right. So, um, wanted to give back to the community. Absolutely. Yep. I was, uh, you invited me to that one. Yes. I didn't snub you. Just so you know. Oh, no, sure. I, I did, you I didn't, didn't snub. No, I didn't snub you. <laughs> you just I, forgot. I, no, no, no. I was looking after my significant other who uh, threw her back out last week. Uh-huh. And so uh, I had to look after her and do all the sports activities on Saturdays uh, instead of splitting them up as we normally do. Okay. But I swear, man, like if, whenever you speak in Seattle... <laughs> I'm there. I don't get a lot of speaking slots in the Seattle. Yeah. Man, we need to find you some. Find hey, you. Hey, why don't you? This give is me a officially slot in the night. Let, let's find. Let's find a <laughs> slot for Mr. Shockley uh, at Ignite. If I had control over it, <laughs> I, I know, would. Right? <laughs> I would absolutely give you a slot at Ignite. Absolutely, uh, for sure. If I had control to give anybody slots, I give them slots for sure. I hear you. So who, who do we got in the room today, man? Well, it's it looking, looks like we got Pierre Roman. Now I'm. I'm curious if he's laying down on his couch. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's yeah. Uh, he is he's and, definitely here, and yep. <laughs> he, he he had a new office mate. One of his his um, his dogs, beautiful just, dog, was just splayed out in the couch. Exactly. And so just I'm like, I don't know how you get work done with a puppy lying on the couch next I'm to you. Kidding. Uh, we got also Mr. Anthony Bartolo. We got Julia Hunter. Yeah. Uh, Tiago Costas joined us again today. We got uh, and he joined us from Frankfurt Airport. Yes, very nice, very nice. We have uh, Chuck Cocker's there. Aubrey Moen. Um, oh, Jason Miller's here too. That's yeah, nice. Jason Miller, there awesome, great. And Aubrey, you know, this is, we're slowly picking up on those numbers. Exactly. We'll see, you know, we got we got to get better on the socials. You know, that always helps. That does. It, it and and it, it, you know, maybe I should change that flow so it doesn't kick off on Thursday. Maybe it kicks off on Tuesday, yeah. reminding us of the <laughs> he, show. He literally has this. Uh, we we have a. A, a, team a, a private team channel yes. on Microsoft Teams internally for all the contributors and uh, financial sponsors to the Patch and Switch show. Uh, and basically, it's just Jared, Joey, and myself. I don't think Golnaz well, might be in there, too. Golnaz and Denise and, okay. and J-Flow. Uh, when did you let all these people in? You let them all in. No, no, Joey did. Uh, I, didn't let I don't care in. because it's great to have them in Okay, because you know it's nice to have Golnaz helping out. Yeah. That way she knows when we have our shows. And she knows when to kick us out of the studio. Exactly. And <laughs> I know Denise has done some work with you guys in the past. We're getting ready for some of the bigger shows like Ignite and yep. such. And then uh, J-Flow obviously helps out when we, when, need can. when we need a hand. Yeah, you got it. Exactly. He's always super helpful. So That's also where I normally ask on Thursday, what's the show name? Yes. To be able to make the reminder inside of... And there's uh, now a tab place. in there for show names. Yes, that, because I asked so much. Yes, to what, what that I, and I've pointed, and he still asks. Of course. Just it's easier. It's sometimes easier to ask the human. In fact, I, I, I could... I, it's easier to ask the human. You know, I'm gonna, are you going to make me make a bot to sit in the channel so you could ask the question and then have the bot answer what the show name is? <laughs> I'm already envisioning the bot. Okay. I'm envisioning. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to speak Canadian. Sorry. Translator. Sorry, the... <laughs> the sorry, <show> me. <laughs> sorry, the, sorry, you don't know the show name. Okay, I have to at least say <clears> this. So, driving through Vancouver last weekend, beautiful. It, it was cloudy. It was a little rainy, but it wasn't too bad. We're right. co coming up uh, on Friday, going into Vancouver, and we go by a bus. And I'm not joking. The bus uh, on the back said "out of service," and you drove up on the side, and it said "sorry, out of service." Of it actually said "sorry, sorry. dot 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 out, out of, of service. service." Yeah, and I'm like. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a lot better than the ones here in Seattle. Let's say F U. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, that's a good one. Yes. Ah, uh, so man, so we start so off. We had our introductions there. I'm trying yep. to follow our official schedule. We we have, we have an official schedule. Yes, we do. This show. Has, the, wait, the first segment that we talk about. Oh, okay. From the trenches. From the trenches. We don't have a sound. Oh. We just uh, we just yep. talk about it. Well, the sound guy's gone. I'm, are you going to make me become the sound guy? I don't know. I just, I'm just glad you're here, Steve. It's awesome. So <laughs> thank it's perfect, you, Steve. Hey, we all, we all, we all. Great. Well, you you have to keep the name Steve because uh, Joey and I switch off on who's patch and who's switch. So um, we'll do let's do it that way. I think abstraction. It's called okay, Bill. Abs <laughs> abstraction that works. Patch well. and switch with Bill and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any from the trenches stories you can share, man? Um. Ay, ay, ay. Can I share them? That's always the question. Yeah, right? I know. Well, I've, I've got one. I've go got for one. it. 
What are you, uh, what's actually, going on these days? Well, um, something you can actually talk about. I, I can actually. Uh, we're. I'll talk. Uh, I've got two of them actually. The first one I'm talking about is about uh, docs.microsoft.com. Okay. It's always everyone's favorite documentation platform. Isn't isn't that where uh, JFlow does a little work? JFlow does a lot of work inside of there. Yeah, he does. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. I've been. That's also where I've cut my teeth and various <laughs> body parts uh, on trying to get uh, <laughs> trying to get commits to work and work out merge conflicts and stuff like that. That's where I, I cut my teeth on Git for the sh for sure. Okay. Um, it's now translated over to to working with obviously source code and and checking in uh, scripts obviously. and things like that. But. Um, I've been working up there because uh, a little known, or not a little known, a, a seldom unacknowledged, no, a seldom acknowledged, I guess is the proper term I should be okay. using, <laughs> seldom acknowledged, not double negative, uh, feature and functionality inside of Azure called extensions. Yes. Extensions and agents. Yes. Um, they people, broke on me yesterday. Well, you know, the extensions and agents are something that you typically will be deploying on almost every single system you deploy inside of Azure. Right. Both in, in a PaaS world as well as in the IaaS world. Of course. Uh, so one of the guys on my team, Daniel Soule, uh, mm -hmm. is the PM for extensions overall for how they work on the platform. And then he has to partner with on-premises, not on-premises, uh, first-party and third-party extension writers. Mm -hmm. to be able to say, hey, man, we're, this isn't working. It's causing deployment issues. Can you fix this? This is the, the percentage that it happens and going on, stuff like that. Uh, he, uh, he and I are doing a double-headed effort on actually revamping a much-needed revamp of uh, documentation around extensions. Okay. So we're pushing to have that done before the end of the month, which is coming up quickly. <laughs> um, and uh, it's going to be kind of very, very cool, but uh, it's forced me to go through and relearn a bunch of stuff about extensions I never even knew about. Mm -hmm. But it's also made me start to um, go along and uh, get my teeth... Um, get my teeth... I was going to get my teeth wet. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm getting my feet wet. You know what it is? It's because I don't have any coffee. I'm drinking this coconut water. Because I came in late. I came in late. Thank you. Okay. I didn't get a there chance for coffee. It's yeah. my fault, for sure. Anyway. Because he's like four minutes left. Do you think I have time to brew some coffee? Yeah, that's, the coffee machine doesn't brew it that fast. No. Anyway, trying to say, uh, it's got me back into doing some PowerShell stuff, which I haven't been doing in a long time, man. In a long time. Oh, a little ASMR. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for that coffee. Hey, guess um, what? It's decaf, so don't worry it's about decaf, it. Decaf. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I've been working again with uh, PowerShell, um, nice. and nice. then playing around with PowerShell in the Cloud Shell, which is always fun. Very nice there. Yes. Um, and uh, I was able to use the drag and drop file copy option. Didn't know, even know it existed, but then I remember my good friend Justin talk about it at one point in time. And you literally can just simply take a file and then drop it inside, like my script. In the and cloud drop shell. it inside the Cloud Shell window, and it just copies it up to your cloud drive. Exactly. Uh, where it happens to be. Coolness. It is. Uh, the, the, there's only one thing I would really like ask as a... Um, for Cloud Shell? For Cloud Shell. Yeah, yeah. Like the, Let me take it to the PM, because I know him. He's uh, down the street for me. There's either one of two things would be great. Either Git installed, so I could get something from a repository. Oh, yeah. Or connection to OneDrive. Either one. That's it. Well. And hmm. and the Git would be probably more useful yeah. than OneDrive. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Do you know if there's a user voice on it? I don't User voice there entry? One. There's a user voice? There is. There always is. Um, that's interesting. I never thought of that. Uh, I have to ask why, why it is or why it isn't. Yeah. Wiring minds want to know. Yeah, because um, <laughs> you've got... You've got both the obvious um, bash in there. You've got Azure CLI, mm -hmm. and you got PowerShell as well. But on the Azure CLI side and on the PowerShell side, we always go through like a two-week refresh cycle mm -hmm. yep. of making sure everything's up to date inside of there. We also have Terraform. We also have Kubernetes Kubelet type things. Great thing. Uh, so you got lots of little add-on stuff. Right. You know, the great thing about Git is good. we could. I mean, uh, like I know my group, we check in all of our PowerShell and all of our. Anything that we use for scripting and automation has to be right. checked in. So basically, you could then clone it down to your mm -hmm. environment and use it there. Hmm. Exactly. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. I'll have to ask and find out why. See if see if it's possible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, and then the yeah. other thing that I was doing the other day was, again, with the PowerShell side of things, uh, was one of my, my old jobs, one of the jobs that I do um, uh, when I first came over to engineering, was I publish images, which is, which is still kind of crazy. 
the fact that I'm able to oh, oh, take an image. Disc images. Disc images. I'm I, sitting I here take, thinking you're uploading pictures. I'm no, like, no, no, no. What, cats? Dogs? Yeah, cat, uh, dogs. My, my daughter keeps on saying my Instagram account is just nothing but puppies for my, for my, for my lovely dogs. But, nice. um, you know, she's like, you, uh, you have more pictures of dogs than you do of your kids uh, on your Instagram feed. I'm like, well, that's, that's <clears> the way it is. Uh, but did you, um, did you say the puppies are cuter? They, well, no, I didn't say that. Okay. Um, so the um, are they? <laughs> I'm not, not answering that question. <laughs> I take the fifth, Mister. Take the fifth, <laughs> Mister. Prosecutor. Um, yeah. The uh, the other thing I was doing is I'm publishing images, and so uh, I had to do some image cleanup of some images that have, ah. are no longer in use anymore. And now, still now just, I go back to the pictures. You had to get some, rid of some evidence. I no, guess. no, no. There's no evidence that's going on right there. <laughs> but uh, it's just it blows my mind the fact that I'm able to. Um, uh, go in and publish images and remove images as part of my my Azure account, which is uh, tied to a publishing subscription. Yeah, to be able to do it, and then the the way that you go off and you actually publish across all the what we're up to forty production regions now. Uh, fifty announced. Fifty, 50, 50 announced, announced. Forty, 40 alive. Yep. Uh, and then you get emails saying, "Yeah, please make sure if you're a publisher that you have images in the new Australia regions that are exactly. online." I'm like, yep. "What?" Yep. Yep, yep. I don't even know how to keep track of this. Exactly. So it's, I think uh, you need to go down to Australia to track this. I should and probably you, check them. And, you, and you, you need some help. There, well, there was a thread earlier, a while ago, <laughs> about uh, trying to get me down to Australia, along with Paul Throt, um ages ago, uh, for doing stuff. And that's weird. My my video streams did something weird on Facebook. I don't know if that's... My video stream is still going Okay, live. well, you know, blame me, because I did something, I'm sure. You probably touched it. I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I did. Anyway, um, but uh, so publishing, publishing images, um, okay. the stuff you have to go through is rather interesting. Yeah. And I had to use PowerShell for it. Nice. And so, well, it's, 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 it reinforced the fact that if you don't use it, mm -hmm. you lose it. Yes. And you have to continuously just go back and revisit the stuff that you know oh, God, yeah. to be able to refresh and remember how to do stuff. Because I was so, it, oh, it, it made smoke come out of my ears at one point, trying to remember the freaking format of, uh, I, I caught myself there, uh, the, the format you're supposed <laughs> like, to use. Where's the dump button? Where's uh, the dump button? <laughs> yeah, to be able to, uh, to, be able to do the, the proper publishing stuff that goes on. That was kind of crazy. Yeah. But yeah. those are two of the big things I did just recently. Nice. There's a bunch of other stuff that I still can't talk about that I hopefully will be able to talk about soon. Yeah. Probably going to be post-build. Yeah. Uh, because timelines for stuff. But yeah, build's coming up. I'm talking no about that too. But how about yourself, man? Well, uh, last week I was what we call our primary DRI, which is directly responsible individual. So I was the one having to put out all the fires. It still, it still freaks me out that you have responsibilities. I know, right? So, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm scared every time. It's like, uh... I'm in charge of all the build and the cloud build and test systems for Microsoft nice. for a week. So <laughs> nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're when you're primary, I mean, your primary goal is to respond to Sev two outages, so like the big outages. Right. So you don't work on the smaller stuff. So this, this just for the, our listeners' benefit, yep. this is Sev three. Which means you'll get to it. Yep. Eventually, uh, Sev four is. Oh, I didn't know these are Sev four. Oh, there's Sev four. Sev four is one of those. Okay, if we get to it, great. If yeah. not, whatever. It's in the backlog. Yep. Sev3 typically is like uh, it's only affecting one team. For us, it's only affecting one team or one build queue. And right. so we, unless that build queue is like trying to push out a hot fix, then it gets raised to a Sev2, which is right. normally a whole org or, uh, a, you know, potentially um, uh, uh, that kind of thing. And then we have uh, Sev1, which for us is we lose a whole region. Of build machines, right? And I and the last, not this past week, but the, my prior week on call, I had a Sev one, and I lost a region. Wow! Okay. I didn't lose it. Somebody so, else lost the region. So the big weeks get notified about Sev one. Oh yes, but the great thing about our Sev one was uh, the kind of we started looking at our telemetry and we're like, hey, I think we lost a region, and we started going through all of our builds and stuff and a few queues were having problems because they did something like what they uh, uh we have in our system they, they can pin it to a specific region and say only build in this region and they chose that region that happened to be dead but everybody else was set for multiple regions right so when that one region went offline they're like okay they started building another region <laughs> big whoop nice and so the the best part about it i'm working with one of our uh program managers next week we were supposed to do a uh, disaster recovery drill 
with uh, with uh, the that environment, the cloud right. build environment. And I'm like, we just lost a region back in February. And he goes, you got all the paperwork around that? I'm like, yeah. He goes, perfect. That's your disaster recovery drill. <laughs> all right. <laughs> there <Nice>. we go. <laughs> so we can actually use an actual dis disaster that went well as our disaster recovery drill. Good. To show that everything's working. Everything's able to switch over. It all worked. How yeah. much downtime was there? Uh, we lost the data center for five hours. And we only lost 120 builds that restarted. Except for right. we had one organization because they had their brand new, just getting started. Gen thing. five big badass, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, big servers <laughs> in uh, that in the region that went out. Yeah, and they're like, we'll wait because their builds <laughs> on other just wait machines, for the higher machines, the builds on the other machines like would take three four right. hours on these new servers. They take like thirty minutes. <laughs> so nice. they're like, yeah, we'll wait. We can we can suffer through the outage for the day. Nice. And the data center got things. Actually, they got it back up in three and a half hours, which was pretty good. Power. It was a and it was a power outage. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was it was a massive power outage, hmm. which and it and unfortunately, I also found some single points of failure right. in the system. Sometimes things are good. You can't do that kind of stuff in a drill all the time. Exactly. Yeah. So good. Yeah. You're so, getting a lot of uh, belated birthday wishes. And oh, thing there. Right. Well, thank Just you, so everybody. You know. I'm. Mark Fleming's joined us. Peter Gray's also popped in and out of training. Yep. I believe Julia said uh, happy birthday to you as well. Yes. Uh, yes. And others. Yeah. She also had a good idea to make the bot have your hat. <laughs> oh, it's we the can, icon. We can have the hat bot. Well, then you have to put in the level of sarcasm that comes with the hat. Oh, too. yes, we would. <laughs> is, is there a cognitive service for that? There, there probably is. Yeah. Cognitive services of uh, the Rick Tilly hat. So the other thing that we do, though, both the primary and the backup DRI, if there's no um, active... Live site, inf uh, live site incidences, yep. we do proactive work. We're the ones that are doing uh, like monitoring or you know, monitoring updates or whatever. We actually have had a problem lately of just a whole bunch of extra resources. Yeah. So my backup and I, uh, primarily my backup last week, he was going through and cleaning up everything. So we're going to actually try and uh, we were thinking about going into, uh, we have an internal system called Head Tracks, which manages all your personnel information. We're going to change our titles to uh, senior uh, internet janitors because nice. we were cleaning up so much information. <laughs> off of. I mean, we found old copies of servers and it's like in, and Azure subscriptions. Like, why do we have this server in here? I don't know. Delete. Nice. <laughs> it wasn't even running. Those sorts of things. We found a whole bunch of servers. We found key vaults with old certificates from like <laughs> a year and a half ago that are that are way out of. Uh, we we used to call those maintenance engineers. Uh, as mm, as when I was in the yes. the, uh, the the janitorial business for exactly. one of my summer jobs, <laughs> we were called maintenance engineers, structural maintenance engineers. Exactly. So we we were going to be the uh, internet maintenance engineers. So nice. Yeah. It's. I mean, we just. I'll, it's amazing how much it's an can, IME. Yeah. Well, it's amazing how much can clutter up. Oh, totally. And the other, the you know, one of the worst habits IT people have is, well, I might need that, so I'm going to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And it's, we're trying to purge ourselves of that habit. Well, well, part of that was the stuff that I was doing for image publishing was mm -hmm. removing a whole back of whack of images that didn't need to be there. I was wondering. It's like yeah. you know, it's just getting rid of these images that yeah. haven't been like a 2003 server image. No, no, these. <laughs> the, well, there's some 2008s in there. Yeah. Um, 2008s were in there. Uh, yeah. Then there was a bunch of other old, old, old images that were Ooh. taken down. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when you when you when you deploy an image from the marketplace, you can see that you can click on it and off it goes. They haven't been in marketplace for a long, long time. The right. only way you could deploy these images was if you knew the exact URI of the image, yep. which is the the SKU, the offer, the um, the version, yeah, the information, big yeah. long string. If you didn't know that, you couldn't deploy these things. Exactly. Uh, but uh, you have to eventually clear them up because it is taking up storage space. Oh, God, yeah. So literally, I had a person knock on my door because I wasn't reading the emails <laughs> that said, hey, I sent you an email and I sent reminders every week for the last month about why you still have these X number of images that are sitting around inside of uh, 28 of our data centers. Yeah. Uh, get rid of them, please. Get rid of them, please. So, yep. Nope, I... It's all about cogs, man. It is. Uh, that's one of the other things that I was actually looking at this week was taking a look at. We've moved a whole bunch of services over to PaaS. Yeah. And with the amount that we've saved on server costs, both uh, physical hardware costs for the on-prem that are now gone, as well as Azure servers that we got rid of. It's just amazing. Right. So I'm just shocked. How about... Um 
How about scripting and automation for systems, for stuff? I, I asked this because in one particular uh, subscription that I'm, I'm working with with a partner right now, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've I've didn't I, I've given the partners contributor level access to certain areas. Right. They have the ability to go off and, and create machines of different sizes. We don't we're not using an overall structured framework like uh, Dev Test Labs where you can actually restrict the sizes of machines that they're looking at right now. Right. Uh, so you know I'm I'm looking around and my my buddy who's working on the project with me tries to deploy a new machine and says sorry you've hit your uh, quote account you can't do that for course. Um, so I'm like I just go back and look at the machines I'm like who's deploying these machines and I'm like oh. Maybe we should have those shut down and just not being yep. used right now. Yep. So I know you can do auto auto start and uh, you can do different routines to query your your um, your things and shut them down. Right. Do you guys use that an awful lot in yours as well? Or does uh, the system look after that just by default? Uh, in our world, we don't because most of the stuff we have is running 24 by 7. Right. When I was over in MSIT, we were definitely doing that. In fact, we had an internal system that we were using, but we were coming up... Uh, with a way to do that. And then we were talking actually with the product group saying, hey, this is what we're doing. You guys want this to give to customers. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And part of it was gonna be scheduled, Yeah, you know, start time, stop time. Part of it was also based <clears throat> off of, you know, we had a lot of devs that would come in, turn on their machines in the morning, and then they get stuck in meetings all day. Mm. And then we detected for CPUs at less than a, cert a certain threshold for more than an hour, and it would shut the machine off. Oh, yeah. Saying that it's an unutilized server. So unless there's cranking going on, get rid mm -hmm. of the thing. Especially oh, yeah. uh, dev, anything marked that was dev or test. Yeah. And with, then we had a with different tags. Yep. Yeah. With tagging. And then we had a different threshold for PPE and a different, uh, and we even had our production servers. Oh, yeah. Certain production servers. Like uh, there are certain services at Microsoft that are only needed during Redmond business hours. Everything you're talking about sounds like a great topic for a subject to uh, make a presentation on. It would be. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that. We could talk about it. Sometime. Yeah. I like that. Then again, I'm more into Power Ops and Flow. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sure you can have an angle to put Power Ops and Flow in there too. Oh, of course. But I mean, the, it's a, it's really easy when you start getting into um, some of these things. Obviously, Dev Test Labs help. Well, well, Dev Test Labs has it's, that entire environment. Yeah. Um, but, it, but this allowed you to work outside of the Dev Test Lab. Right. Right. And have it tie. And, and we use a lot of the, uh, a lot of tags. In fact, we tied it almost all to tagging. Right. And then it would execute checking tags and say, oh, okay, go. We'll and you can this. set up tags to auto-populate based on group membership with policy and that sort of stuff. There's a whole bunch of things there, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but unfortunately, recently, I was trying to deploy some servers, and you talk about extensions, like all the extensions blew up on me. Like, <laughs> and I can't deploy these servers. I don't know what's going on. So I've been fighting Azure servers all week this week. All right. Well, the few days that I've been at work this week. Nice. I was, I, was, I was sick most of the week, so. Your shoulder's better. My shoulder's feeling better. I'm definitely. On the mend. On the still. mend, but definitely not, definitely nowhere near 100%. So, like, not going to go out and play golf, not going to go fishing or anything. <laughs> oh, but. It's good. Yes. Can't really, I, I don't even think I could lift a, uh, uh, a boil pot of beer. That's a serious injury. I, if you that's can't do a that. serious injury. Yeah, exactly. I've got some uh, brake rotors and calipers in the back of the Jeep. You could help me lift out. <laughs> no, it's a two-person lift. I understand. No, <laughs> come on. You need Pierre for that one. Nice. <laughs> oh, so how about uh, our next segment, which is uh, from? Not that we did from the. We trenches. did from the trenches. So, um, uh, beer money. What is it? Beer money. Beer money. Beer money. Tech beer support for friends money. and family getting things money done. Beer. What have you done recently, man? Um, I actually just helped my sister yesterday. Up in the cottage lake again? No, uh, no this is the house. Okay, the this primary the residence. House. Yes, the primary residence. Uh, I got a text from my sister. Happy birthday. Hey, we're having a problem with the Wi-Fi network. Oh. <laughs> like, did she at least have like a pause or was it the same sentence? Uh, it was. She did have a space. Okay, in, at in, least a space. In, in, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was like, happy birthday, you know, return, return. We're having a problem with the Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, man. And the funniest part is, okay, I'm... I'm talking with her about it and i'm like okay we're, so where's the problem because i thought i had set up a pretty good mesh because i got her one of those uh ubiquity unify right the home you know the the cube the, version looks the nice cube version and it has extender kind of thing yeah, yeah. Re, re, i don't want to call them extenders they're repeaters they yeah, have yeah. full-on repeaters totally and it's mesh yeah it's total mesh and i'm like so where's the problem <laughs> she goes well we can't connect the new washer dryer to the network <laughs> are you serious yeah <laughs> i'm like wow so she's actually buying a repeater for the basement 
just to make sure. Just to make sure it can get because she's got an app on her phone that she can totally do, you know, manage the washer and dryer and see stuff and on her phone. Wow. I don't know what to say, man. I don't know what to say. (laughs) Is her fridge connected too? I don't know yet, but I'm gonna guess soon enough. Soon enough. Soon soon enough. So, is the level of technology in her house higher than what you would normally expect to see? Like it, is is uh, yes and no. Like where is it coming from? It's uh, is it from her? N- no, that's the whole family. They have an Amazon. They have the uh, Amazon Voice Services devices. Right. right. They have uh, TVs that have both. Um, they, it's they, like they, Alexa, remind me when the dryer's done, <laughs> or something like that. Right. Yeah. Even though I've uh, I've told you that joke, haven't I? I was uh, in a business meeting. I. Guilt and someone was at home and on a on a um, right uh, speakerphone device in their house and I knew they had an Amazon oh, device yeah? near their desk yeah and in the middle of the meeting I just screamed out Amazon add toilet paper to the shopping list <laughs> <laughs> and you could hear the the, the device in the background <laughs> okay adding toilet <laughs> and the guys just Jared stop that <laughs> nice yeah I'm a nice guy um, no she can't uh, Pierre I just saw your question no she cannot load the washer over the Wi-Fi's I you know what I would pay a gazillion dollars to someone who would fold the laundry after it's done uh, my sister would probably just send the kids downstairs and say yeah. load the yeah. washer and right. dryer um, no it's not autom- that's not automated yet but I, I you know the level of devices they have is amazing yet it's also kind of scary because they have so many devices and they're all on one network and it's all you know we're, and, and i we're, we're going to talk about that we should we we're going to do an episode specifically we were. on how to segment and partition your network for yep. the the ubiquity world well i and i set up my network and i'm super happy with mine right so i uh, i actually have um and there's people coming to my house and they just look at me and probably face palm i have five ssids in my house right <laughs> And just to, just just so everybody knows, he lives in a condo, nineteen hundred square feet. nineteen hundred square feet, and he's got five different SSDs. SSIDs. Yeah. Well, wow. tec- well, technically, I have five base SSIDs, and then on four of them, there's a two point four and a five gigahertz. Right. So yeah, I. I'm, I'm he's probably... basically consuming all of the radio space. Dude, there's like forty yeah. SSIDs. If you fire up a device at my house, there's like forty SSIDs. Right. And so, so in in napkin yeah. form. Yes. What are the five for? Uh, they are for, I have a separate SSID and if you will, VLAN for my Xboxes. So right. they have, and they have QoS. So that way, that way they get priority for streaming Quality content for streaming and for, for, everything. Um, yep. for game. I have my own private Jared Wi-Fi network. Channel. That's a Jared network. I have a guest network. Of course. And that one there has a paywall on it. That's um, asking for donations. Uh, it isn't, <laughs> uh, you can put up a pay page. I could, but then people like Julia would kick me in the butt oh, okay, because yeah. she's she always calls me. You know, why do I have to deal with the net nanny every time I come here? Nice, because she that's what she calls my firewalls. Nice. Um, I have one for the IOTs. Yes, totally separate. And then I have one uh, last one that. Oh wait, I dropped that one. You don't have, you don't have Sonos, do you? No, no, I don't use Sonos. Right. They're too expensive. Well, well, Sonos needs to have its own kind of thing too, right? To right, but the, so the so old, I would probably put Sonos on the same as the uh, the IoT slash uh, Alexa devices, except if it has to access the computers. Well, that's, I don't I don't have music anymore that's on premises. Right, all my music's just from different streaming services. Well, see, and and the great thing for me is the IoT network is totally separate from everything else. Right. It just goes to the internet. All my lights right now, I got a whole bunch of those, uh, the Wi-Fi controlled power Switches outlets. or lights? Uh, the switches. Okay. So the wall switches. Yeah. Um, once I get it all set up on the network, I can turn on and off lights. Right. And at first I was like, okay, I'm going to try this. It's, just, it's addictive. I have gone full in on this. No, it's I addictive. Mean, I mean, to the point, I know, and actually Julia has been uh, hanging out with me this week and she's like... Uh, I, I even set it up in the guest room. I'm like, okay, I give you guest access to the to lights and stuff. She goes, "What about your bedroom?" I'm like, "No," because <laughs> I don't want you at three in the morning going, <laughs> "Turn on the lights." <laughs> nice. But uh, I mean, I have two in the guest room. I have uh, all the lights and all the lamps in my bedroom, all the lamps in the living room, all now set up. Right. And I can use an app and turn them all on and off as I want to, or as a room, or individually. 
And what's even worse is I started playing around with things. Unfortunately, Flow doesn't work with location services too much yet, nor with the smart home service that I have. But if this, then that does. And I now have a couple of if this, then that rep- right. recipes of when I leave, it shuts off all the lights. <laughs> oh, nice. And when I come back, it turns on the living room and my bedroom lights. Right. So I can walk into the house and the lights are all on. <laughs> So that's just cool. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I've yeah. got too many lights in my in my house. <laughs> too many switches, too many lights. Nice. Uh, but I will eventually be getting there. Yeah. It, you, it, it, it's super helpful. It really is. And then if, I guess if, you, if you're if you already into the Amazon Web Services or the Google Web Services, the Google Assistants or whatever, if, who, in the voice services, tying it to where you can just say, you know, my sister does that at her house. I can hear her in the background sometimes where it's just, you know, Turn on this, <laughs> and you know she's speaking to the Amazon. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, oh, so, I'm just turning on the lights for the kids. So, or something. so my issue is uh, that I resolved with um, the recent birthday of my twins uh, was that one of the twins kept on taking the Alexa device, yes, up into her bedroom because it's a speaker, yes, because she likes to be able to control music with her with her yep. voice. And so I'd be downstairs in the kitchen. I'm yelling, Alexa, start a timer for 12 minutes, and. And she, Alexa, Alexa. So I'm, yeah. I'm setting everybody's off right now, of yes, course. Exactly. Uh, but it's just, fly, yeah, it's just <laughs> flying all over the place. Um, and so I'd be yelling at nothing. It's like I'm, it's like I'm, it's like it's just my kids too. Yell at the kids and they don't answer. Same thing. Now the smart devices don't answer. Exactly. They're not there. It's, it, you should be used it to gets this. It. it gets to it. You, it. you should be used to this. It gets, it gets annoying. The other thing that was nice for me, though, was as we were out of town, I was like, oh, I forgot to do timers for my lights. You know, to, you know, Just pretend kind of like you're there. Too. I was able to set everything up on my phone. Yeah, of course. I was just like, okay. Boop, boop, boop. And now they're, they're programmed in, and I have them shut off now, but like, I can turn them on again. It's, just, it's nice. It's just It makes things so much easier. It does. Yep. Imagine the world where we didn't have any of this. Oh, I can imagine it. I've been there. I was there. Yeah. Yeah. How, this, this actually brings up a, a side topic uh, okay. of interest. Just get your thoughts on this in case you All have right. any thoughts on this or not. Uh, how about that um, Microsoft Sphere announcement that was literally wow. on Tuesday? Yeah. That was unheard of. That's cool. Um, I was excited after I heard it and did some ex- initial, initial research on it. Yeah. I am super excited for the capability of what it can do. Um, it really, you know, when you take a look at kind of, you know, I, I've been listening to a few podcasts and stuff and people are talking about the, you know, the different waves of technology and like, you know, the initial wave was PCs and, you know, Microsoft really was at the lead on that. Well, in the mobile f- waves, Android and Android iOS and has iOS, been yeah. in the front on that. The next wave is IOT. Yeah. And this gives us a chance to jump out ahead of everybody, especially from the standpoint of... We're leading with security on these things. We're leading with security. Yeah. That's my biggest concern. That's why all those devices that I have in my house are segmented off onto a network that is totally separate, has a totally separate SSID from anything else in my house. There's no way they can jump the network. Right. So hopefully for, for those of you that have been in sleep under the rock or something like that, uh, Microsoft <laughs> sphere, uh, yep. is a system on a chip. Um, so it's a, there's a mic. Yep. That is basically a Azure, Azure, sorry. It's, a, it's a Linux. It's a kernel. micro Linux. Kernel. It's, it's a micro Linux kernel. And a it's, lot not, of, it's not a distribution. Nope. It's a kernel. It's the kernel that, uh, basically is able to go on to a system on a chip. Right. To be able to be used for internet power devices. Exactly. And, from, and completely manageable and secure. Exactly. One of the one of the cool things about it, though, did you? I mean, this is part. Of, they're going to have a core for the OS and a core for your app mm-hmm. on that system on a chip. So there's segmentation, even the app from the OS, of course, as far as it's even neat. CPU and memory and everything. It's like holy cow! So the app is going to have to make calls, you know, proper calls to the OS and to the uh, the I/O capabilities, but it's not going to be. They can't like memory jumper or um, uh, segment into the OS space like a, you know, even though we do all the security protection. Makes hijacking yep. very difficult. Very difficult. I'm not going to say impossible. No, I'm, because I'm not going to say impossible either. I'm, but it's, it's, it's beyond my level of expertise about that. But it's going to take someone to be able to jump across. Yeah. You know, they're going to have to understand how to get through that. That's going to take a lot of work and more power to someone that can do that. I know a couple of people that possibly could. 
but I don't think it's something that they could do easily. <laughs> Coolness, though. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, and the great thing about it is then you have, uh, what is it, for 10 years, we're going to offer operating system updates. So for the it's OS a, and the firmware right. for that. That's the biggest problem you have nowadays. You don't get any updates and there's, you know. You have no idea what version you're running, what distro you're running, the exactly. different things that are on there, where it came exactly. from. That's why they're concerned with baby monitors and, and light switches and other stuff like that, what they're doing. Well, and the biggest thing is when the, um, remember we had that big DDoS attack a while from back? From cameras, wasn't it? It was, it was from internet cameras and like access points, like, right. the, like the home Wi-Fi router access mm. point. Because they were Linux distros and they hadn't been updated in forever. Mm -hmm. And even after all the security people had told, you know, these companies, go and fix your products. It's a, oh, no. It it's finally, a throwaway. Yeah. yeah. It finally took uh, several of the companies, the fact that that DDoS happened and it was found to be their devices that were part of the problem. Yeah. Finally. They did some updates. So, But others that did say, nope, we're, th that's end of life. You just need to buy a new one. It's definitely coolness in that space. Uh, to see where it goes. I'm anxious to see where it goes from there. Yeah, um, for sure. I don't have any yet. Don't have access to it. <laughs> in case anyone's wondering. Yep, neither do I. I do have, I, I mean, there's part of me that just wants to play with it. Of course. And, and try it out and figure out something to use it for. Because that's like, that's going to be awesome. But like uh, like they were talking, uh, I was listening to a podcast earlier today. They were talking about, you know, everybody, a family may have, you know, back in the day, a family would have one PC for like four <coughs> or five people. You know, this is back when PCs first started coming out. You know, now, nowadays, yeah, a lot of families have one PC for everybody. Right. But you definitely have at least one mobile mobile phone for everybody in the family. Close to it. Close I know to my it. family does. Yeah. Not, not every family does. Not every family, but very close. At least the adults <coughs> do. Yeah. With IoT, I've, I've already got 12 of these dang <laughs> switches in my houses. <laughs> You know, it's like, holy cow. This is why IoT, yeah. I mean, it, you know, things are smaller. Obviously, PCs are bigger, that kind of thing. But, man, whoever gets in, in front of this IoT stuff is really going to lead it. Very, very cool. And I really, Just, really do like <coughs> the fact that we fo uh, Microsoft focused on the security side. It's an enterprise play. It is. <clears throat> well, it's not just enterprise. It's it's also consumer. <coughs> That's the great thing about this. <clears throat> Are you gonna die on me here? I'm sorry. I've got this tickle that will not go away. Um, okay. I'll, I'll take a I'll take a, a momentary pause to recognize Mr. Uh, Sean Logan coming in just before a flight. Ah. Oh. Before his takeoff. Uh, I noticed that um, Switch hasn't popped in to say hello, and he's I've flying, noticed that. So yes. You know, poo poo on you. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> but. Uh, Peter Gray's here now. Steve Enns finally showed up, which is nice. Yeah, no you know, kidding. Yep. The slackers up north. Slacker. <clears throat> he, he's the one that said it, not me. <laughs> so I don't know if anyone's noticed, but um, they've painted the room here. They did paint the room a little. The, it's, this is a, they, they will actually be props behind us at some point. Yep. They, they actually consulted yep. with the team here <laughs> and our creative director. Yes. Uh, about what types of things we should have uh, behind us. And they went with the shelving option to be able to change different things in and out. In fact, actually, I was told by Golden Ass, they're going to have boxes from the Microsoft Archive that we can go through. And pull nice. Stuff out. That we can just periodically go in and throw new things on the shelf. Yep, so exactly. Stay tuned. There'll be a whole theme every show that will be changing stuff around. Oh, you can you do that theme. I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> That's going to imply that I get here early enough to do something. Exactly. So. Which means you probably have to have your kid drop you off. Before it's, going to school with yeah. your car. Well, th this time I'm using my motorcycle because it's nice outside. <laughs> I'm supposed to be going for a ride this weekend. Uh, the Seattle area, a bunch of Microsofties created this charitable organization called the Tulip Ride. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tulips are in, tulips are in uh, bloom, bloom up, in, up north. Yep, in the Skagit Valley. Yeah. And uh, so what they do is they basically they partner with the Seattle Humane Society. And okay. they sell tickets to be able to do a guided tour. Very cool. Up to the tulips and then back again and then this, that sort of stuff. But um, unfortunately, I can't do it this weekend. Because of the kids? Because of the kids. And my wife's back. Mm. So. That sucks. Uh, I've just donated the money instead. So yeah. the the, yeah. Do the doggies and the kitties and the bunnies and that sort of stuff. <clears throat> exactly. Get, uh, get lucked after. Well, I was uh, just had dinner last night uh, with a good friend of mine. She's now the deputy director of the uh, Imagine Children's Museum up in Everett. Oh, yeah. Great charity. Great little children's museum. If you're in the Seattle area. 
head up there. If you got kids of any age, I would say up to even middle school. Up to 25. <laughs> uh, I, I had fun in there. But then again, I'm, I, I say I'm like a seven-year-old. I love so, museums, man. Oh, and, and this is, I mean, hands-on, cool stuff. They are just starting a um, major fundraising drive to um, do a major expansion, mm -hmm. a $21 million expansion. Wow. Yeah, they think it's going to take about four or five years. Um, I, I, I give every year to the, to, the, to the charity. And the great thing about it being at Microsoft is it gets it, matched with Microsoft. Yeah. That's good. And the fun part about it for me is, at least I feel, is um, I give it a level where they normally give the uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, the people that are donating a free membership, and the other thing you can do is donate the memberships back, so oh, yeah? they can go to a family that's in need. So I love doing that. And this year was the first year I finally said, you know, if Microsoft's matching and I can give, you know, and I get a membership, doesn't Microsoft get a membership too? I mean, <laughs> it's at the same levels. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Ed Ed, uh, Ed Ledowski's, uh said hello, and he says, "Hey, that sounds like a cool ride to be able to go up." Yeah. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, I did that ride again. I did last year's um, True. ride. Yeah. It was half decent weather, but it was freaking windy, mm. and uh, you see these little tiny bikes being pushed <laughs> <laughs> by the wind because yeah. th there's a chunk up there where you're right off by the sound. Yes. And uh, it's farmland, so the wind just comes straight across. Straight across. Yep. Uh, which was rather precarious at different points. Yeah. The, the uh, we were lucky uh, this past weekend. The wind wasn't too bad driving up through that area. Yeah, because uh, year the year before when we did uh, SharePoint Saturday Vancouver, uh, we were at the uh, had a storm, similar kind of storm like we had last week, and I was like, oh great, because uh, and last year they actually uh, canceled all the ferries from Vancouver Island, which oh, yeah. dropped the attendance. Yeah, yeah, because you had a whole bunch of people coming over from Victoria. Yeah, to attend. So that's rough. It is. Um, Beer money story for myself. I'm Beer trying to money. think if I even have one this week or not. Um, hmm. 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 I t not really. Not honestly, really? Okay. it's it's been it's been a slow beer money week this yes. week. Uh, not too much stuff going on that I've had to worry about trying beer. to help. Not enough beer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, well, we can move on. I guess I'll pass this week and I'll go off to beer talk instead. Oh, okay. Beer talk. Um, so I've as been, I mentioned, I've been sticking on men, so I haven't had any. So I know, you haven't had ahead. any. So you're Jones for yes. some. Oh yeah. Um, so so uh, there's a competition happening tomorrow, tomorrow. which is the uh, annual. Uh, we call it the Brewers' Choice Showdown. Yep. Uh, which uh, home is brew. A, a home brew, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of fun. Everyone that can come is a judge. The people that do stuff. This year, I've entered in a English ale with ginger, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I have no idea how it's going to do. Should have entered it with Marianne. It's good. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I just got that. You just got that. Just got yeah. that joke. I'm yes. sorry. I'm slow today. Again, it's all right. No coffee, only yeah. coconut water. Go. No, <laughs> I don't want the sludge. Um, so that one there's going on. Uh, and uh, I actually helped a friend of mine brew beer for the first time uh, a couple of you weeks ago. You were talking ago. about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A couple of weeks ago. Yep. He was. He had a fun time. Good. Uh, he should be entering into secondary. I need to touch base with him to, okay. for what to do. Um, and then we're going to go off and uh, filter it and keg it and, and have nice. it go from there, which nice. should be fun. He made a... Juicy, juicy IPA, I think okay. it was called, and it's basically a citrus IPA. That's oh, why okay. Them, that's why they call it juicy. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and I got my results back from the National Homebrewers Competition. How did how did they come back? So I came. I I donated. I donated. I put in three beer <laughs> to the national competition into this into the Portland uh, entry. I did not finish in the top three. I wasn't okay. expecting to. All right. Uh, I did get my judging sheets back. Okay. And I just missed getting a certificate because they give certificates for different categories that you get right. into. Right. I just missed them with the certificate. So Darn. not bad. I think I shot maybe a, if I was looking at my, my grade score average, I think I was probably around the uh, 65 to 70 range out of 100. So okay. not too, too bad. Yeah. Uh, but um, common stuff I could probably fix. You know, it's the Good. first time I was bottling beer with a gun. Heck yeah. So that's, you know, a skill I need to learn apparently. Honestly, the first year that's the big thing you want is commentary yeah the, there's the commentary notes that are coming back so yep. uh i'll be sharing those in detail with our beer group to, to talk Excellent. about it and i actually have beer left over that is still bottled okay. that i'm going to give to you so okay. you can make your own notes and comments and come back and tell me what you think okay and you're supposed to give me constructive criticism when i when i pass them along to you and are you going to use uh um 
active listening when I uh, <laughs> I will I will receive the feedback in a positive way as well. Okay, I appreciate it. So um, you're full. Of <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be doing that. It was kind of fun. Um, and I've got no other beer brewing uh, lined up, but I'll be working the bar uh, on Saturday. Gotcha. Uh, with stuff. And I do believe uh, one of our listeners will be joining us oh, at really? the show. Mr. Bartolo is coming into town, and I think he's going to arrive in time to be able to try some of the beer. I see. We'll see how that works. Don't know yet. We'll find out. Okay. Stay tuned. Good. Is he coming into town for next week? Uh, there's um, there's an event next week going on that yep. he's part of for his group. Yep. And I'm hoping to be able to get him out uh, for some nice. pints. Very nice. And uh, you're away all week. No. I thought you said you're gone all week. No, I'm just going for the weekend. The weekend. Yeah. Okay, so you're back next week. Yeah. Okay. And Mr. Art. Yeah, is I was going to say, good. Art's around too, yeah. isn't he? Yep, he'll be around. So. I think we need a good excuse to go to BBC. I think we do too. I still have not picked up any of my gear. <laughs> and I'm hoping that it's still around, but I really don't care. Um, because uh, I heard that they just, uh, they have a new IPA on. That's uh, a couple unfiltered, of unfiltered IPA, it looks like. They have actually a strong English ale. Oh, yeah? Which is just below the Scottish ale. Yeah. But For above. alcohol level. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of it, it's it's kind of between the, um, I don't know what the, the, I think the pale ale might be below it, kind of. Yeah. And so it's not quite as malty as the, the, uh, um, uh, the Scottish ale, but it's not too bad. So can't wait to try that. Yeah. Yeah. Now we've got a good excuse. Now we've got a great excuse. To be able to go off and do it. For sure. For sure. Peter's actually asking uh, a perspective. What? Can you request a perspective, Rick? Yeah. What? Does he want to, what, he wants to try my beer or something? I don't know. I can't see it. I, I don't understand. We'll see. I, I, I don't know what he's saying. I don't want to, I don't want to request for a perspective, Rick. <laughs> um. Uh, so, um, <laughs> do you have any desire to make beer in the near future at all? Um, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. You're waiting to see. Nothing's. Yeah. Like I'm thinking, I need to come up with some good uh, summertime. I've got a full fridge, man. Yeah. I've got a full fridge, and uh, my taps are starting to get low again. Well, I got cans of cans of cans of cans. Wow. So I should possibly bring a few cans over. That would be good. Yeah. I've be uh, good. I've been. Uh, oh. The new feedback tool. He's asking for feedback from the new feedback tool. Oh, okay. Yes, I could do that. You know, what? I'll set up a. I'll set up a. <laughs> I'll set up a a, a, a a Microsoft form that we can Jeez. use. There we go. Uh, to be able to get uh, in, input back on how the beer tastes. Okay. There we go. People. Um, but no, I'm I, I I'm I'm curious. I'm wanting to play a little bit with the Scotch ale recipe a little bit. Tighten it up. Make it better. See what we can do. I mean, get that wee heavy going on, you know. The wee heavy? Yeah. Because the last time we tried to do the wee heavy, uh, all it the all the, uh, I yeast, take the, the, the yeast died. There was some nasty stuff that happened. There was yeah. some cross-contamination. Well, was, yes. Yes. I definitely think we need to do it again. It's it, that's for I sure. find the wee heavy and, and that sort of stuff, it's more of a fall beer than a Not summertime me, beer. Man. I know. But <laughs> it's... Uh, then it's, again, Mr. Pineapple is a pretty nice summer beer for me. But. Yes. <laughs> Someone Pineapple actually, infused. Who is it? Uh, Hefeweizen. Aubrey is mentioning that maybe we should go off and make a pickle flavored beer and you can call it Pickle Rick. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so nice to see Aubrey oh, these yeah. days. It's been a while. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> and also, P Peter Gray is asking for an MS Poll style review of oh, the beers God. that we could do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like manager feedback. Yeah, uh, the, the, the feedback tool we could do. Exactly, a possibility. That's always it's always fun. My manager is like you know, we always have fun in our team room, and he, uh, we always mention something. He goes, "Hey, you know what? MS Poll's closed. I don't have to be nice to you guys anymore." Oh, nice. <laughs> As a joke, and it's like, nice. oh, come on. <laughs> no, I've got a. In fact, that was actually I. I got we got semi reorged this week. So oh yeah, so. but our. We stayed the same. We had another team join us. So we got a bigger team. Cool. Worldwide. So, cool. I had, I had an offsite on Monday with uh, the other half of the new team that came ah, by. Nice. Um, there was a open source enterprise software group that was under a different team that joined uh -huh. my group, which was the Azure Linux team. Because obviously we work together. Linux is Let more than just open, open source, source software. Linux? Hmm. Yeah. So it made sense, uh, <laughs> which is really, really cool. <clears throat> Yeah. People I'd already been working with now simply part of the same team, which is good. That is. That's super helpful. 
Definitely helpful for collaboration. God, yes. It's coming up. But uh, we got Build have, coming up. Build coming up next yep. in, in the next couple of weeks. Yep. Um, I'm already getting the, um, we need to add this to session. We need to add that to session, kind of the kind of emails that are flying through. Plus, I'm also being pinged by uh, folks trying to get their content into a Corey session yep. that I help lo- I, wrangle every year. I uh, I had to laugh because, <clears throat> you know, being in the build system, we see a whole bunch of build queues for blah, 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 demo, blah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 demo, blah, 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 demo. <laughs> yeah. And we get a lot we've been getting a lot of escalations of hey my build didn't work yeah. and, and, and here it is and you click on the link and it's blah blah blah, blah demo, demo. <laughs> and yeah. then the build's not working it's like okay you guys <laughs> let's nurse this along guys oh and and and, and it's fun sometimes dealing it's fun sometimes because it's like wow you're playing with them trying to figure things out in other cases it's like you you asked for 15 build builder units and you only have 10 available right it's not going to build <laughs> until yeah. you get 15. <laughs> Nice. Yes. <clears throat> but random spending. Random spending. Have you done any? Oh my god. I've done some. The whole time I was down with my shoulder and a little bit here while I was sick, I I kept Amazon running. Oh man. Oh. Kept the lights on. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's uh it's been anything notable that came up? Um let's see here. I was just gonna take a quick peek. It's your, like, it's your shopping hey, list. Hey, exactly. <laughs> Um, it, you know, I've gotten a lot of little things that are you know, like filling in gaps and stuff. So that's, that's been the biggest amount of my spending. I don't know about you. I had a whole bunch of like, Oh, I, you know, need this. Oh, I need to add this. Oh, the big thing actually was like right after my, um, uh, surgery was I didn't have proper ice packs. Oh yeah. To keep your shoulder in, yeah, in check. So I got these, uh, ice packs. I got this really cool one. Uh, this one, uh, I show you it's, it's these little gel pearls. It's this one right here. Oh yeah. And you can heat or cool with it. I bring it. I now bring it to work every day. I like this weekend when I go up to Orcas Island. I've got that. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap, man! You're not. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I was going crazy. Um, I got some. Uh, uh, the other thing I got because I got this lovely mouse. I actually got a second one of these mice. Yeah. So I have this oh, one as my mouse, personal yeah. mouse. Then I have one for work. Well, my problem was at work, I was in, I was connected to my desktop via USB, but then I couldn't connect to anything else because it was Bluetooth. So I got a Bluetooth connector for my desktop yeah. at work. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I've, I've, I had to pick up one of those for similar reasons as well. 19 bucks. I got a great one. And yep. it's the latest standard and everything. It's great. And it's a real thin, like you plug it in, it only sticks out about a three eighths of an inch. It's really nice. Fish tank stuff. Fish tank stuff. For me. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine trying to repopulate the fish tank. So, water test kits. Ah, uh, okay. To make sure that my water nitrate, doesn't... nitrite, and ammonia levels are correct. Uh, <laughs> I wonder with the why. Fish. I wonder why that's so. Well, I already told you. I, I replaced the <laughs> heaters uh, with titanium heaters as opposed to glass heaters, so they can't shatter. That's good. So I'm uh, gonna eliminate that from a disaster. And from a disaster recovery perspective, I bought two heaters as opposed to one heater. <laughs> so they run in parallel. They run uh, in par- so and then there's a temperature probe that goes off and kicks off. But uh, if one of them dies, then the other one will still fi- still continue to work. Nice. But um, the big thing is that they're solid metal, uh, so that they can't shatter, which is good. Uh, good. So no more electrical fish. No more electrical fish. No. Uh, maybe an electric eel would that help? Well, so you can't put fish into anything. So basically, I've got this tank running gotcha. uh, for the last couple of weeks now with yeah. doing nothing but filtration and, and keeping things moving to build yeah. up the the healthy bacteria that goes in and keeps the um, levels correct and also brings stuff back to life. And then eventually, <laughs> um, after an inspection by the SPCA, I'll be able to allow fish back <laughs> into the house once again. Uh, PETA, the SPCA, yeah, whole bunch know, of... It's all there. So, so oh. we need to get three work safe words. Yep. It already looks like we have one. Uh-oh. Which one? Bose. Bose. Are we allowed to use brand names? Bose? Uh, I guess we can. Yeah, we sure, can. Why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Bo- Bose. Why, why Bose? Can well, we talk Bose? They're, they're, they're a, a little... I know we're sponsored by Bose. Yeah. Or no, we're self-funded by self- ourselves buying Bose. Buying Bose. In fact, we're I just think we talking. sponsor Bose, actually. Yeah, we, yeah, we do. Um, well, I don't know if we talked about Bose today, but <laughs> I know why she brought up Bose. Oh, yeah. yeah. I um, I just realized from a, from a spending perspective, I also bought brakes for my Jeep. Ah. That's why I have brakes in the back of my Jeep right now. 
Gotcha. Um, because so I bought brakes. Stop. I, it's <laughs> so I can actually stop. But while I was under there looking for brakes, I realized that a bolt was sheared off of nice. my of my connector arm nice. to, the, to the axle, which was causing my Jeep to dive to one side whenever I braked. That's and it was funny. a $4 bolt. Yeah. $4 bolt that I had to buy nice. to be able to fix that. So we got Bose and Sphere. We need one more word. Oh, nice. That's and good. We'll actually uh, see the band starting to yeah, they're join shuffling. in. Here. They're shuffling. There, there we go. There they are. So we have a, another lovely show today. Yeah. It was, it was fun. Good. We passed it. We passed the check marks. We did we the things. We had the conversation with folks. We'll say hello and thank you very much for everybody coming out here with, uh, of course, we can never see everybody unless you comment. Right. Mr. Pierre, we got Mark, we got Julia. Tyler joined us there. Nice to see you, Tyler. Peeler. Aubrey. Uh, Aubrey joined in. And then we got Stephen Enns finally joined us. Sean Logan. Peter Gray is in there, too. All the way down at the bottom. Ed There's Lukos- so people, man. We got Ed Lukowski. And I can't even yeah. go to the very, very bottom. Like yeah, Tyler. Off. Bartolo was here, too. Bartolo was here for a bit. Wow. We need a better roll call. We do. We might have an app for that. Right, so we have two words though. Does we have come two. Up with a third word? I don't know, but uh, we're gonna have to get going here because the band is wrapping up. So mm-hmm. have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Talk to you later.